You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Folks, today on Capitol Hill, Reverend Dr. William J. Barber joined members of Congress to call for uh, a reconstruction resolution to confront what's happening with the poor in this country. This is what they had to say. We know that if we're going to get the omnibus legislation necessary for a third reconstruction, reconstruction fully addressing poverty and low wealth from the bottom up, we must address several interlocking injustices simultaneously. We can't separate them anymore. Systemic racism as it relates to all of races, black, against black people, brown people, indigenous people, Asian people, and the collateral damage done to white people because of systemic racism. Systemic poverty, ecological devastation, denial of health care, the war economy, and militarization of our community, and the false moral narrative of religious nationalism. We know that the cost of not addressing inequality is too high. This is the question we ask the media to ask because we already know what the criticism will be. Well, how much does it cost? But Joseph Stiglitz, a Nobel Peace Prize economist, said for us, this is the real question. What is the cost of inequality? What is the cost of leaving it as it is? This is a moral issue rooted in the com 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 commitments of our Constitution that the first thing we so add to is to establish justice, promote the general welfare, and to ensure equal protection under the law. This is a moral agenda, but a moral agenda from my faith tradition, this is Pentecost week for me as a Christian. And in Pentecost, morality is not just folk coming together and singing we love each other. It is coming together by the Spirit, building a community where there is no lack. So a moral agenda is also a sound economic agenda. We must preach good news to the poor. Those who Greg, um, in that first segment, you talked about public policy. Mm -hmm. That's what Barbara is talking about. We talk about the third reconstruction, uh, dealing with public policy and how to impact what's happening with the poor. You're absolutely right, Roland. I mean, and listening to uh, Representative Lee and Representative Jayapal today as they talked about this reconstruction resolution, mind you, that legislation, a resolution, just trying to, 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 to get into the conversation, it really ties directly to what, uh, to the large conversation we were having just before the break. You know, you don't transform a society in a modern world system built on capitalism. You don't transform it through capitalism. You have to organize people. And so uh, what, what I'm saying is that when we heard Reverend Barber and then Representative Jayapal and Representative Lee today, you know, when you talk about 140 million poor people or people who are just a step from disaster, as Representative Lee said today, and you re emphasize the fact they make up 30 percent, that we make up 30 percent of the electorate, then what you're saying is that public policy is the way that those who are not the winners in a winner-take-all, zero-sum game called global capitalism, believe me, capitalism doesn't stop at the U.S. border. What's going on in Palestine right now with Israel, what's going on in Africa and the Caribbean and Latin America has a direct connection to why you pay so little for draws in Walmart. But, I mean, without getting into that, public policy in this country means Barber and, and, and all are saying, we must now redistribute resources. Because if you don't redistribute resources, if you don't eradicate po poverty from the bottom up, as he said, and as Representative Lee said today, here's what's going to happen, because capitalism is really unsustainable. Those people who don't have a place to eat and sleep, those people who don't have health care, those people who don't have a capacity to earn a living wage, you know what those people are going to say? They're going to say, well, I guess I'm a loser. I guess I'll sit down here and die. No. As the dude told me when I was getting my doctorate at Temple and I saw the brother, he, had, he said, man, they're getting around a round of layoffs over here. He, he worked on the crew at Temple. I said, what you going to do, man? He said, I'm going to get this last check and buy a pistol and a ski mask. See, here's yeah. what people don't understand about capitalism. It is unsustainable. You know how you stop war? You create a society where people don't feel like they have to go out and rob somebody, damn it, because you ain't got enough police. 
And we're going to talk about the killers a little bit later. But what we're seeing now is the result of, of stratospheric inequality. And that's what Reverend Barber, Reverend Theo Harris, the Poor People's Campaign, and the tradition of Martin King and everybody else is trying to stop before it spins out of control and we all out here trying to find a gun. And that's when you're going to find out the Second Amendment ain't worth the paper it's written on because you ain't going to be able to get a gun. See, Reezy, this is one of the reasons why... Um, when all these companies were complaining, they were complaining about, you know, these unemployment benefits. And I, I got a tweet early, and I wish I can remember who sent it to me. Um, and it was it was one guy who he had to raise his wages to $15 an hour, and then he started marketing his available jobs. Guess what happened? They all got filled. Then guess what happened? He didn't see a drop-off in revenue. See, what... What, what you're seeing, with this third, what you're seeing when people demand $15 an hour, you're seeing people say, y'all want somebody to work for $7 an hour, you're not providing any child care, uh, I don't have transportation. So, hell yeah, I, if I, if, if I got to go through all of that, I might as well just take unemployment if literally I can't even afford the child care. Hmm. So all these pro-lifers, yeah. the party of family values, hmm. don't like Head Start, don't like prenatal care, all of a sudden, y'all want to holler uh, why these lazy folks can't work. A lot of them want to work, but there are other impediments to keeping them from working. Absolutely. I mean, and here's the thing that's so crazy about this is there are public policy proposals, there are politicians that are actually trying to get to the root of this problem. But what's happening, the, the, the number one way to combat that is not actually through this capitalism, it's actually through this propaganda campaign, this disinformation and misinformation campaign that keeps mm. people distracted, that keeps people dumb, that keeps people ignorant, that actually empowers their ignorance through all of these false, through all this false information to turn them against the very people that are actually trying to propose the solutions that will uplift their lot. That is the craziest part about the society that we're living in. So I, I, I understand Dr. Carr's position about capitalism and being unsustainable, but I think one of, the, one of the really pressing issues that doesn't get enough attention is how unsustainable our society is if we continue to live in a society where we don't agree on a basic set of facts, where we don't live in a fact-based society. We don't live in a science-based society when it comes to this pandemic and the vaccine, for instance. We don't live in a fact-based society even when it comes to our politics. And I've seen this. I'm not going to invoke any names because we don't have all the time for all that. But I will say I've seen time and time again where people are against the, let's just say the CBC, for example. The CBC gets more shit than Mitch McConnell and Kevin McCarthy and any of these other, even Donald Trump did at the time. And they're the ones who have put forth the HR 40 Commission. They're the ones who have been the conscience of the Congress. They're the ones who have, for decades, tried to push forth poverty-reducing measures, health, universal health care. John Conyers was the one who introduced it over and over again before Bernie Sanders became popular for, for, for champ, or not championing it, but for talking about it, let me say that. And so we have a disconnect in between where we have people that are so blinded and so uh, captivated by disinformation that they're actually making it that much easier to keep them down because they're not supporting the people. And it's not a magic wand, but it does start with actually supporting the politicians at every single level that are actually proposing these solutions. Mustafa. Well, you know, I know policy. And, you know, it's interesting. When we talk about poverty in our country, you know, it is, de it is debilitating to the mind, to the body, and to the spirit. And when you look at the mm -hmm. policies that are connected to each of those elements, then you understand the dynamics that are happening in America. You know, we understand the lack of investment that is happening around education and accessibility uh, and how we are unwilling to pay folks who are actually creating the next set of leaders for our country. So that says something about our country and where we place value on individuals. When we talk about the body, there's no reason for folks to be dying prematurely from air pollution or when they turn on the tap that they can't have clean water coming out or being exposed to lead. We know that in our country right now that we got a wealth gap that's going on. So this resolution begins to get people focused in the right direction if they're willing to actually do the hard work. When you got $171,000 going to white families and $17,000 going to black families and brown families, 
then you know you got a problem that you have to be able to address if you're serious about the dynamics that are going on in this country. When you got 24 million people who are dealing with food insecurity and living in food deserts and 25 million people who are in physician deserts and medically underserved areas and they can't actually even get to a doctor, even in a COVID-19 pandemic, then you know you got some, you got some problems that are going on. When you got 500,000 people who every night in this country are going to bed homeless or housing insecure, mm -hmm. That goes back to the poverty part of what Dr. Barber was talking about. When you got 2.2 million folks who are in prisons and jails and internment centers, and that you continue mm -hmm. to feed that pipeline, when if you made the investments in these other areas that we're talking about, you could completely change that dynamic and you could build wealth back in black and brown and indigenous communities because the men and some of the women are not going to jail, but they're actually being utilized with that God-given ingenuity and innovation that they have, you can change the dynamic. And for those brothers and sisters who are focused on gun violence and the 36,000 people who are dying, it is tied to poverty. Mm. Yes, people sir. are mm -hmm. making choices. People are losing hope because folks won't invest in them. So when we have this resolution talking about this third set of opportunities, and when Biden, who I support, everybody knows that, and I love Kamala, then we should be having not a, just a Build Back Better campaign, but a campaign that is specifically focused on those individuals who have been unseen and unheard. And I believe that the administration is actually trying to do that, but sometimes we gotta call it out. Who are the folks mm -hmm. who are in pain right now? Who are the folks who have been disinvested in? And are we serious about changing this system? Our brother W.E.B. Du Bois shared with us that the system was not designed for us. That's right. But we, I think we can change that dynamic here. In the 21st century, we can make some decisions about if we really truly want to embrace everyone in our country, do we actually want to truly lift everybody up? Then that means we have to have intentionality. And we have to have intentionality in making sure that policy, which has been infused with racism and discrimination and biases, that that is extracted and that it is no longer allowed and that there is penalties for those who continue to utilize those types of practices, whether on the federal, the state, the county, or the local level. That's right. Here, here. We can leave it at that. All right, folks, back to our Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. we win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, 10, 15, 20, 30 dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends, go back and look at the last two weeks, especially at Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States Senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it, please do because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com.